Many of you know that I'm a diehard Terminator 2 fan, as well as Terminator 1, and I must admit that Terminator 3, while not perfect and nowhere near obviously as good as Terminator 1 or 2, Terminator 3 is not bad, and in fact I do give it major props for its ending. That being said, let's dig into Terminator Salvation. Well, where do I begin? As all of you hopefully appreciate and know, Terminator and Terminator 2 Judgment Day are heralded as the, well, not the, but one of the greatest uh, science fiction series of all time. And when I say that, I mean, you know, Terminator 1 had a lot of film noir to it. It was the first of its kind in the sense that it, it took the killing machine to the next level. I mean, if you really think about it, Terminator 1 is a almost a horror movie. I mean, think about the scene when when you know the terminator goes into the police station and guns down 17 cops i mean that's pretty epic pretty bold for 1984 and of course terminator 2 is you know a great story it's well acted it's very well written the special effects are still top notch to this day uh, the film will be around in some form or another until the end of time you know there are movies that come and go movies that you know Take Tremors, for example. You know, everybody, for the most part that I know, knows of it, but they don't know a lot about it. You know, everybody knows Terminator. Everybody knows, you know, I'll Be Back, Hasta La Vista Baby. Um, so that being said, that out of the way, when I first heard that they were, they being studios, Hollywood, whoever, was going to be making Terminator 4, I was like, I was I was honest with myself, you know. Arnold is is now. I'm not gonna say it. He's old. He's still Arnold. You know, he still got it. But Arnold is too old to play a Terminator that we all know and love. Jim Cameron wasn't doing it because he still believes that you know he, and I agree with him. He he made Terminator One, and he finished the story with Terminator Two. He thought Terminator Three was okay. And I honestly forget what he thinks about Salvation, but we all probably know what he really thinks. So I immediately thought to myself, what the hell are they going to do? But, you know what? Let, you know, this is literally just me reading Studios Confirm Terminator 4 will be made. Alright, let's see what happens. About a year goes by. First trailer comes out. And, um, made me pumped. But what really got me excited was, you know, the, tra the the second trailer, but also realizing that this movie is taking place in the, the, the future, you know, the future war era. And some of the best parts of the first two, I'll even throw in the third Terminator movie, is the future war, you know, what the movies are about, basically, is trying to stop Judgment Day and the future war from happening. So a whole movie based on the future war not only is a really cool concept, but badass. I mean, who doesn't want to see, you know, six, seven, or a hundred Terminators fighting against uh, the Resistance? That that sounds awesome. All right, cool. Let's let's wait. Let's watch this movie. And of course, this I think the the final trailer for it came out with that Nine Inch Nails song. And I'll I'll admit that trailer blew my mind as a Terminator fan. I was like, this movie's gonna kick ass. You got Christian Bale, who coming off of The Dark Knight earlier that, or that year before, I think it was. All right, cool. Mick G, who the fuck is that director? Whatever, it's a Terminator movie. It's Christian Bale. It's Batman. It's gonna be awesome. It's a Future War. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, Sam Worthington, the guy, the guy from Avatar. All right, cool. And then the movie came out, and I have never left a theater with two very strong emotions of anger and being let down now was i excited to see a terminator movie on the big screen with an adult mind because when terminator 3 came out it was 2003 so you know i, I, just, I wasn't even in my my 20s yet so you know uh, whatever i left that theater so frustratingly frustratingly angry if that is such a word and many of my friends know about it because we've talked about it but um, 
let let's let's just make this a lister because this video is running a lot longer than it should. Okay, you're gonna make a movie in the Terminator universe and call it Terminator Salvation, and it's gonna be set in the future during the future war. Okay, badass idea. What war? We we open up the movie to you know okay helicopter. Well, first of all, we see cruise missiles taking out uh, HKs. Uh, 100 kilo ground units, which look nothing like anything from Terminator 1 and 2. And you could always make the argument that, you know, when in Terminator 2 and in 3, they change the timeline, so the development of specific models changes, uh, whatever, fine. It's always been a pet peeve of mine ever since Terminator 3 because I love the design of the first, uh, or the first two movies, the HKs and how they stay the same, whatever. We don't see a war. We see that opening uh, skirmish at the Skynet bunker factory satellite dishes on top thing. And then we see um, John, you know, is the last guy alive, last man standing, and he fights a T-600, which I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, we open with that. When's, we don't see anything else. There literally is no future war in this movie. What the fuck is wrong with you? You set a movie in one of the coolest ideas settings whatever you want to call it and you have like a pitiful little battle oh well there's the scene where they escape a giant mech in a, in a in a truck okay point number two why the fuck does skynet need mechs that can pick up people why you got you got ground units you got the t-800s you can even throw in the t-600s you can throw in the t-1000s even the tx which i didn't really have a problem with from terminator 3 what does Skynet need with a walking mech? Transformers 3 came out. I think it was the same year. Maybe they just wanted to act kind of like Michael Bay. Who would want to do that? I literally, like, even when I saw it in the trailer, I was like, was that a mech? Uh, okay, whatever. Point number two, or three technically, <laughs> going on useless Terminators. And by the way, in the movie, they call everything Terminator. A Moto Terminator! Oh, T-600 term. When was the term Terminator synonymous? Like, I know that when Reese is talking to Sarah Connor, um, in the, in the, in the, in the car, you know, when they're trying to hide from the police and the Terminator from Terminator 1, um, he call, he calls it a Terminator, an infiltration unit. Okay, it's a Terminator, by definition, is designed to go and terminate soldiers, people, uh, you know, infiltrate the ranks, and, and you know, kind of like a Trojan horse, only not as cool. Okay, so why is everything called Terminator, especially Moto Terminators? And on that point, or on that note, we move to my next point. What the fuck does Skynet need with a fucking motorcycle Terminator? Oh, it's super fast, and it can weave in and out of course. Let me, let, let, let's get this right. It's a fucking motorcycle, right? Yeah, yeah. It's controlled by Skynet or its own CPU. Yeah. So if I walk up to it and push it over, can it get itself up? Uh, no. Because in the movie, clearly he demonstrates that once he, you know, he, he in the one of the only few good moments in the movie where he plays You Could Be Mine, you know, he ties the, the rope and it makes it flip over and it's on its side and it's revving its, in, its engine and it can't get back up. Do you really need a fucking motorcycle Terminator? No. The only reason that that exists, along with the mech, is for an action scene. A pointless, stupid action scene. Whatever. Okay. Another point. You have Christian Bale as John Connor. You have Sam Worthington as Marcus. And then you have, um, I'm forgetting his name right now, the guy who plays Reese, he was also in Star Trek good actor um and you have uh i think it's one of will smith's kids playing the little girl star whatever and then you have the the the, the freaking the the tits of the movie whatever her name is i don't even remember her name the acting in this movie with the exception of maybe sam worthington again and again reese is horrible i will sit here and tell it to you to your face if you want me to but Christian Bale as John Connor, while it sounds good on paper, sucks. Because the entire fucking movie, 
I can't even do it right now because I'm tired. He had the Batman voice going on. And everything that he sound, said when it was supposed to be rising and rousing the troops, whatever, it just sounded forced. It sounded like he was just there. And I don't know why. He could have been a great John Connor if he had watched the first, the first, the, well, technically, the second movie. Um, I have no problem with Sam Worthington's acting. I thought he did a good job with what he had. Um, and again, the guy who plays Reese, I guess he watched the first movie to see how, um, Michael Bean, who played Reese in the first movie and in the deleted scenes in the sequel, uh, how he runs, because he does have a kind of unique running style, and he did, and I watched the movie again, and he, he did, he, he copied the running, you know, good job. Um, but the acting is, it, it, I'm just going to focus on Christian Bale here, because it's John Connor, you know, could have been a lot better, um... So, anyway, moving on. Here's another problem of mine. So, the whole plan, Skynet's whole fucking plan, this this movie, basically, was to lure John Connor to Skynet with Marcus. Marcus is basically, you know, if you watch the movie, you know what I'm getting at. What? Skynet is supposed to be super fucking smart. Why, why would you waste all that fucking time? Just program Marcus to punch John Connor in the face and crush his face in. Kill him. Done. You win. But, okay, we'll let that go. Because we wouldn't have a movie without that, right? When Marcus goes to Skynet headquarters, which in my opinion, if you Google right now or YouTube um, Skynet headquarters or T3 Battle Across Time, the big building that actually looks just like the logo here that's what skynet's headquarters should be it's it's a factory it's a, it's a, it's probably a big computer room in there somewhere but it's just a big factory so they go to san francisco um which why the headquarters is there instead of you know norad or something it's a big open glass it looks like an, a fucking apple store with interfaces for people yeah it happens to have the plug that goes in the back of sam's head Marcus's head, but why is there fucking human interface shit there? You know, one could argue if it was a normal building or, or NORAD that, oh, well, it's just left over from when humans roamed. No, it's it's a, like a new building. It's Skynet headquarters. Why does it, why does Skynet need fucking computer screens and, and terminals and shit? Why? It's, it, it, I fucking hate that. Just like I hate the Moto Terminators and the mechs. Why? Um, another problem I have, and you could kind of argue that it's just, you know, the style. In Terminator 3, when the TX is, at the end of the movie, when, you know, it's crawling after John um, and his girlfriend because and Kate because, you know, she's trying to kill him. And, uh, you know, the Terminator, you know, grabs the, the wire sticking out. You know, it, it doesn't scream, it kind of roars. Which, I was kind of like, eh, it's a machine, does it really have to show emotion like that? But, one could argue that that's part of its programming, trying to emulate being human to blend in with, it, with its surroundings more. Okay, okay, fine. In Terminator Salvation, you have the T-600s, which were the predecessor to the T-800, which is what Arnold is. Which, again, I said I was going to get back to it. I like that they put that in the movie. You know, Reese clearly talks about it in, in the car with Sarah from the first movie. You know, they had rubber skin, they were slow, they were big and cumbersome, they were easy to spot. Okay. I don't I don't mind them. I like that. Again, they put it in the movie. Why the fuck is its aim so bad when it's firing the minigun? Which, why give it a minigun? What the fuck happened to the, 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 uh, the, the pulse rifles? The pulse rifles, what is this, aliens? Um... Uh, the phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. Why is it shooting a fucking gun gun, human gun, instead of that? Oh, it's a minigun. People know the minigun from movies. They're going to get excited about it. That's why. But whatever. The T-600s, when they move and, you know, they are slow, they're cumbersome, they're big machine things, they make noises, be which, okay, fine. Um, when <laughs> the giant mech makes a growling noise when it steps out of the fire. Fuck you. It's not a transformer. 
But then the Moto Terminator, the, the motorcycle Terminator, again, pointless, pointless, when it's on its side and John is picking at its brain and taking the eye out, that same mechanical sound, you know, Okay. Here's another thing that disappointed me. Terminator 1, 2, and 3 in the credits. The theme. The score. The Terminator theme is one of the most recognizable, best themes for a movie. Period. Everybody knows the, the theme. So, when I heard that Danny Elfman <laughs> was scoring this movie... I love Danny Elfman. I think he's a great composer. I think I, I could sit here and name off dozens of movies that, you know, Batman, Mars Attacks, whatever. I bought the soundtrack because it's tradition. I, I own all the soundtracks. I didn't download it. I didn't get a digital copy. I went to a store and physically bought it after the movie. I don't I don't listen to soundtracks before the movie comes out. That kind of spoils it. So that lets you know that I bought it, but. I was so disappointed in the soundtrack for this movie. I don't understand what Danny Elfman was thinking. I read somewhere that he wanted to be a little different and take the theme and the soundtrack of the Terminator movie and take it in a new direction. Why? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I can understand. Like his okay, the main theme in the beginning of Salvation. I kind of like it. It's a different take on it, but. At least during the fucking credits, play the original or, you know, a rehashed version of the main theme. Even Terminator 3 did that. This movie, the score, it's just completely real. It just doesn't sound good at all. It's like a generic score. It sucks. Um, what is there good about this movie? I do like the fight with the T-600 in the beginning. When, uh, right after the helicopter crashes. I thought that was very well filmed. Uh, the camera movement and angles and the special effects. I mean, it looks like a T-600 is there. And what I do like about it is that they make it sound like the T-600 has weight. You know, when it's when its fist hits the ground and when it's walking or crawling, it sounds heavy because it is heavy. It's a Terminator. That's something that even Terminator 3, you don't really feel unless they're busting through a wall or fighting each other. Um, so I did like the fight scene. Um, I did like Sam Worthington's acting. Um, and then the other guy who played Reese, I forget his name right now, and I'm not going to Google it. Um, I did like how they had a lot of little nicks and homages to the other Terminator films, even Terminator 3, when they had the, um, the power cells for the T-800. Um, I didn't mind that. I did like the, again, the use of the You Could Be Mine, I thought that was pretty clever. Would have been nice if they had the original radio, but, you know, whatever. And the big tamale of the film, at least it's been called that, was the inclusion of Arnold. Now, this movie came out a few years ago. At the time, special effects were okay to do this. I didn't mind it. I did not mind the fake Arnold. Um, I thought it was a, a decent thing to do, if you will. Um, I like how they had the almost the original Terminator intro theme when he stepped out of the, the, the smoke. Um, and of course, they did it right, and they gave him, you know, the 80s haircut that he has for the first half of the movie. Um, now, I don't mind the fight at the end between the T-800 and, um, you know, Kyle... Kyle Reese, yeah, yeah, technically Kyle Reese, John Connor, and uh, Marcus. Um, the special effects are good, but, it, you know, in the end, I just think it could have been done a little bit better. Um, so, in the end here, I hate this movie. I, I really hate, I cannot stand Terminator Salvation. For being what it was, and for the hype that it got, I still cannot believe that it's it's classified or known as a Terminator movie. And it really it, it really pisses me off when I hear or read comments about, oh, Terminator Salvation was a good movie. No, it wasn't. It was not a good movie. Even on its own, it was not a good movie. And I will sit here and tell you that till the day I die. There are some good elements to it, but overall, 
for what it is a Terminator movie where the first two even third films yeah there there's action it's not the movie wasn't made to be an action set piece to have a set piece after set piece it has stories a story and there's action scenes that are part of the story the action is not the story itself and I think that unfortunately the way Hollywood is these days they call it the Michael Bay effect where everything has to have an explosion in it and I like Michael Bay I think that he's an okay director and he cares about his movies a lot but unfortunately with Transformers and a few other films Hollywood seems to think that you know having a two and a half hour runtime because there's story in it can be replaced with an hour and 30 minutes of explosions and bad acting um, I, I, I again I might the first point that I made how it's the future war and there's no future war that probably pissed me off I can let everything else go including the motherfucking Moto Terminators if it was if we actually saw at least one like the opening skirmish and then one battle I really really wanted to see massive amounts of Terminators and humans fighting each other HK's jets you know like the first two films it opens with the future battle I wanted that times 10 and I didn't get it and the trailer made it look that way and you know everybody who's a Terminator fan agrees that's what it should have been and it wasn't so oh well this has been a rant of mine um, I really should have had alcohol for this maybe I'll redo this and uh, upload it again but anyway BSG Trek fan 88 here see ya